third installment of our iTrack Forms Building 101 webinar series. Uh, today we're going to be covering form inspection specifically, and then uh, we'll have another webinar after this to cover some other uh, more complicated um, additions to forms. So let's just go ahead and talk about what we've built so far. So we created the form type, which is the shell containing all the other information pertaining to the forms. And then we've added some sections with some different fields, such as text boxes, yes, no selections, and so forth. And then today we're going to add another section uh, called specifically form inspections uh, to this pre-existing forms. So in order to complete or start a form inspection, uh, you're going to go into um, the dynamics section that has everything to do with forms, form types, et cetera. And you're going to scroll down here until you find form inspections. And when you click that, any pre-built inspections will be already here. And if not, we'll build one from scratch. So you can use this for anything resembling checklists, certification, uh, obviously inspection as the name implies, anything that you have to go through a list and say yes, no, not applicable, et cetera. So this is what inspections would be used for. And we're going to create a new one on the fly and then connect it to the form. So I'm going to create new. I'll call it test one. And there'll be some fields that we'll, uh, we'll skip for now because they're not applicable. So such things to do with hazard groups uh, we're not doing. Pass percentage. So as you're filling out the inspection, uh, it's going to figure out based on the number of questions that you selected, yes, no, whether it passed or not. So you can set a percentage of pass fail. Uh, default to pass, we're going to say no. Allow findings, we're going to say yes. And we'll talk about what findings are. Uh, risk levels, we're not doing that for this. Weight factors, uh, we can say yes or no, but um, that's just a different way of weighing the pass percentage. We're not going to do anything with hazards, and we're going to say show finding author yes or no. It's not really going to matter. Okay, so that's the very basic information. And then here on the right-hand side, you see we have uh, five different groups called headings. So this is what we'll create uh, for the inspection form. So the typical options are yes, no, and not applicable. So that's the three that we're going to use. So we're going to say the first heading is yes. We're going to say the color is green. Uh, required findings, we're not going to necessarily uh, force that, but you could. Uh, allow group, I'll say yes for that, and I'll show you when we come to it what that looks like. Then I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to enter a no for the second heading. I'm going to say red is the color. Findings required no. Allow group. Edit yes, and then the third one that we're going to use for this example is going to be not applicable. And then for that, we'll select um, gray as the color. And there you go. So at the very basic level, this is all that's required. We've created a form inspection. We've given it three options that users will be able to choose from. And then we're going to click Save. And now a new section is going to open up. So on the form itself, you can have one or multiple sections. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and create a couple of these sections. So we're going to say section one. And then we'll call this 1.0. We're not going to do anything with the weight uh, for pass. We can put in something like this. A lot of group edit, we can say yes, because we've been doing that. And show expanded, we can also say yes. Okay. So as soon as I've hit save on the section, and then it will open up another option below. And you can think of this as the individual questions. So the section might be, you know, if it's, for example, an automotive inspection, it could be uh, the engine compartment, the bay of the car, the suspension, that could be the sections. And then these section items would be the individual checklist items that you check off. So again, if we're using the car example, you know, headlights, tires, that sort of thing. Okay. So I'm going to Click new inspection section. We're going to call this question one. And we can call this 1.1. This is description. And down here, there's some stuff you can ignore, like the risk and hazard handling. Um, the finding information, so there's some categories in here. And if you want the user to select it, you don't have to pre select any of these options. But if you want to pre select, make it the default you could and also if you need to add in structures or something like that there are sections for top comments bottom comments 
You can add those and we'll show you when we show the form where these appear. And there's also this additional thing where you can add for checklists. Um, so what you do is you separate them uh, with commas. Show you what that looks like. So now I've got one question under one section. So I'm going to hit back and I'm going to add a couple other ones just to make it look more realistic. Save that and we'll go add one more to this section. Okay. So now I'm going to go back again. So right now you can see I'm in section one and I've got three questions. So if we go back one more level. So again, this is the very beginning of the form inspection where we entered in the name and the three headings. And I'm going to say, hey, let's have two sections here. So I'm going to do that. And I'll call this section two. And I'll call this 2.0. And then once I save, this other section will open up and I'll add two questions here just to be consistent. Yeah, so that's question one. Okay, so now we have the basics of the inspection. So I'll just go back to the top one more time. So we created an inspection called test one. We have three options, yes, no, and not applicable. And we've created two sections. So one section has three separate questions. And another section, section two, has two separate questions. Okay. So this is a very, very simple um, form and it exists independently in the system. So if you've created multiple inspections or one inspection you can attach it to multiple form types so if it's very generic uh, you can recycle the same inspection on many different forms so the last step before we can see this form appear will be to connect this inspection to the form type so for that we're going to go to our form type so this is what we created at the very beginning of this webinar series this is the shell and you can add it to an existing section but for the purposes of this, we're going to create a whole new section so it sits apart from um, the other uh, displays and controls that we've been showing. So I'm going to click the ellipse. I'm going to click new form section type. Or we'll call this inspection. And you can see it's already attached to this form time that, that I'm working on. I label no top instructions, bottom instructions we can skip. Um, so you'll see this on a few different fields, the show instructions. Uh, instructions can show up either just when you're editing the page, when you're printing and editing in read-only mode or in all uh, variations. So if you add a lot of instructions to your forms, uh, be cognizant of these options there. Okay. So right now you see there's nothing else that I can do. So I hit save, a new section will appear. And this is where we go and now actually connect the form inspection that we created to this uh, form type. Okay, so new form type field. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to choose from our field options user defined inspection. So this is how we connect the inspection that we already created to this form. We'll give it a name. And we don't need to add a uh, unique reference. We don't need this required. Show labels fine. 
read only no is fine display for we're not going to change which teams people see this uh, we'll allow it to be seen if you're printing a report. We're not connecting it to any document items. And we'll leave the show instructions for all. And we're going to scroll down here to where the most important bit is, is form inspection. So here you can either search if you've got lots or it'll just bring up the most recent one. And test one is the one that I created. So if you click test one, uh, we've now connected the inspection to the form and then for the style since we did add things that are checklists we'll select checklists and findings show thumbnails um, if you're doing uh, stuff with images that would be yes but otherwise it's fine to leave on whatever the default is and once you click save now all the bits and pieces are connected okay so if i go back up to the top of the form so you'll see that we created a new section called inspection. And in here, we uh, connected it to the test inspection that we create by using the user defined inspection field option. Okay, that's essentially all the bits and pieces. And the only thing left to do is to show you what it looks like. So now we're logged into iTrack and we've got our um, sections here with all our different forms. And we've been putting everything under the test form. So I'm just going to refresh the page for a second just to make sure um, all the data that I've been entering has caught up. And as soon as it's downloading, we'll load a new form. Okay, so this was our basic form with account information, date, time, text box, yes, no selection. And if you scroll down here, you'll see that we've got this inspection test that we created. And as so many R track forms, you have to hit save before these other controls are activated. So we're going to do that to kick things off. And now you'll see that the questions and sections that we built, section one with three questions, section two with two questions, and the percentages all appear. Now, in order to interact with them, you click the edit button and a new field will pop up. And in here is your questions. So this is where you can say yes, no, not applicable to all the various options and categories. So there was that question that said, um, you know, can you control or interact with the entire group? So that's the section above. So if you want that option there, you click it and then it selects the same answer for the entire section. OK, so this um, I icon next to the rows is where you add those descriptions. So if people need to read long text, that's where it all appears. And then if you need to have findings against one of these sections, so um, basically either adding documents or um, presenting actions or doing findings, you click the arrow, the down arrow, and then it'll open up a section. And actions and attachments are common controls throughout iTrack. You'll see that on different types of forms and findings is uh, more specific to the inspections. So in here, you'll see on the findings, this was one of the categories that was in there. And in this case, I said it can default to non-conform. So, and if I didn't select one, that would be blank and up to the user to select. And this is the lists that we added with um, comma separated values. So, as your users are going through them, they can interact with whichever um, sections need them. So in this case, I didn't pre-populate a category, so there's nothing here for me uh, automatically. And then I, once I select it, then everything else uh, follows suit. So this can be obviously uh, filled out as you go. Uh, also, if you're interested in recalculating the pre, uh, the percentage complete, you can you've got a button for that. But otherwise, users go through this and they um, fill it out as they go. Um, they can close and come back to it uh, just by simply coming back to this form, uh, clicking the edit button, and continuing on. And as you can see, there's even a little bit of color coordination going on. That when I selected yes, those boxes are green. If I selected uh, no or NA, the boxes would be red and gray, respectively. So that's where the colors come in. So at the very basic level, this is how you create a form inspection and attach it to your form type. If there's any questions, please feel free to let us know. Otherwise, we'll see everybody on the fourth installment of our webinar series.